Hi everyone, this is Dan for thecreativemusician.net. Today I'm bringing you a short video about active versus passive sound systems and what the main difference is. So let's get started. Just recently I was going through some of my old sound system equipment that I had kicking around and I decided it would be best to sell a set of passive speakers that I had. So I went and put an ad online and I received a lot of comments and responses from potential buyers. But I also noticed that a lot of people seem to be confused between the main differences between what an active speaker is and what a passive speaker is. So today I want to help you just to clarify the difference between these two types and also to help you in deciding which is going to be best for your specific application. Now it goes without saying that regardless of what type of speaker you're using, it's going to require power in one form or another. Now this is where it's important to know what a power amp does and how it functions. To put it simply, a power amp is required to make any speaker work. And the only main difference between an active and a passive speaker is the location of this power amp. When it comes to an active speaker, the power amp is built in directly to the cabinet of the speaker, and it is perfectly matched to the speakers inside the cabinet. This means that all you will have to do is plug in an input audio signal to the, to the speaker, as well as plug the speaker into the wall. Now this makes active speakers a lot more convenient because the power amp is built directly into the speakers and therefore you don't have to carry power amps separately. So active speakers come in all shapes and sizes and they can range from a couple hundred watts of power all the way up to a couple thousand watts of power um, depending on their output. So they can be very convenient because you've got basically everything in one compact unit but they do tend to weigh a bit more and they also do tend to be more expensive. Now most modern active speakers do have built-in protection and limiters in the power amp section, which basically means they can be pushed pretty much to their maximum without causing damage. Active speakers are most popular these days, um, especially when it comes to portability and convenience. Now because each speaker will have its own built-in power amp and will only require line level audio, you can basically have an unlimited amount of speakers. So in a band setting, for example, you may use two active speakers on as floor monitors and two active speakers as front of house. If, for example, you're then playing as a solo act in the corner of a bar, you may only require two speakers, one for front of house and a floor monitor for yourself. So the nice thing about active speakers is you have that flexibility to bring as many or as few speakers as are required for the job at hand. Now, one of the bigger drawbacks to active speakers is the fact that each speaker will be required to be plugged into the wall. This basically means that if you're in a venue where power is limited, you might run into a few issues um, having to power each speaker separately. Depending on what brand you're looking into, active speakers can run from a couple hundred dollars to several thousand dollars, depending on the quality and the power output. So just keep that in mind. So when it comes to passive speakers, on the other hand, they do not have a power amp built in. So simply put, a passive speaker is literally just a speaker in a box nothing more. So this means that you will require an external power amp to drive these speakers. So power amps can come built into some mixers or they can be bought in rack mountable units. So when it comes to a passive speaker system, this is basically how the system works. The audio signal will be sent from the mixing console to the power amp via a line level signal. The power amp will then add an electric current and send that signal down a speaker cable through to the speakers directly. Now, if you do plan on using a passive system, it is important you know the difference and how to match um, speaker impedance as well as wattage to an appropriate power amp. In a passive speaker setup, it's important you use speaker cables between the power amp and the speakers itself, um, as these cables are specifically designed to carry not only the audio signal, but also an electrical current. So if you're not quite sure, be sure to have a chat with um, you know, somebody at a music shop um, or somebody with a bit of speaker knowledge to ensure that you're matching the appropriate speaker to the appropriate power amp. 
So at the end of the day, it's going to just come down to what your specific requirements are. For most singer-songwriter applications or small band applications, and if you're going to be jumping from venue to venue, an active setup is just going to make your life a lot easier in terms of not having to worry about power amps and external um, hardware or any of that. Now, if you have a bit more knowledge of the technical side of things when it comes to speaker impedance or wattage, a passive system might be a great option for you as well, especially if you're looking to have as much control over the speaker system as possible. Well, I hope you found today's video helpful and hopefully it points you in the right direction as to what type of speaker system is going to work best for you. I'm Dan for the creativemusician.net. We'll see you next time.